floor with the JQuad students. And we were told of a story where some kisses who are in Lodwa, the way they could tap some water and then plant veggies and maize. And the Trukara could come with their cows and graze and tell them, what are you doing? If people see us planting these, they will not be giving us musahada. Beloved, what kind of mentality is that? Beloved, listen. So the second principle is to give unselfishly. The third principle regarding offering is to give cheerfully. You should not be compelled. You see, let's read about that from 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 6 and 7. Mark down the text. The Bible says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap uh, bountifully. Beloved, every man, according as, the, as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God loves a what? A cheerful giver. The Bible says, not grudgingly. Some people are unhappy and actually ready to grumble whenever an offering is collected. Is that right, beloved? Is that a right attitude? No, at all. That is the grudging attitude when you feel like you've been you are being pushed beloved to give if you are giving if you are going to give give how cheerfully remember we are actually not discussing tithe here you don't give tithe you return tithe this text is referring to the giving of offerings other people will give out of necessity they feel that they need to give because the bible requires it is that that, that kind of a, a right attitude that is giving out of necessity. God says, if you are going to give offerings, give them how? Cheerfully. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's suppose that today is your birthday. I say, oh, birthday. I guess that means that I'll have to give you a gift. Sure. Uh, don't want... Uh, 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 will you not be in a position to receive a gift when I'm giving it to you during a birthday. You see, birthdays are so much currently are becoming everything. Will, I, will you force me on what I'm supposed to give you as a gift? It should come out of me cheerfully what I'm able to afford. And beloved, let me give it to you and let me let you know that God blesses a cheerful giver. You see, Jesus reveals to us that our heart and our wallet are closely connected. Someone once said, the most sensitive nerve in the body is the nerve connected to the wallet. That is true for very many people. Let's read what Jesus said about the connection of our heart with our treasure. In Matthew chapter number 66, verse number 19 to 21, mark it down. Jesus says, Lay not, up your, uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Meaning what? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And where is your treasure, beloved? That is where your heart is. Of course, the reverse is also very true. Where your heart is, that is where you will be able to invest your money. People like to actually to invest in things that they love. I once, once told a story of a guy in uh, when you go to Eastlands uh, around Donham, there is a big uh, neighbor's building there. I was once told, I do not know how true it is that the owner of that building heard that the building is going to be brought down because it's on the road, reserve. And before it was brought down, he collapsed and died. The property still stands. What does that one mean? The most sensitive nerve was done what? Was touched. Because where your heart is, there your treasure is. Actually, most people have their connection with their house, their property, their car, their children, all grandchildren. 
their sweethearts. You know, when a man is in love with the sweethearts, he will be able to spend his last shilling on her to buy her some of the flowers, candy, or some gifts. That is men. I mean, when a man is actually in love with a woman, he will be able to give her his last shilling before he marries her, of course. What about after marriage? What sometimes happens? The husband begins to complain when she asks him for money before marriage. What about before marriage? He will give her his last shilling. After marriage, he grudges every shilling he asks for. What happened? What are you using the money for? You will not even tell me how you are spending money. Whereas the love is fading. It is the same with God. When you love Jesus Christ, returning tithes and giving offerings is a delight unto thee. And so, beloved, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure? Friend, ask yourself that question tonight. If your treasure is in God's cause, that is where your heart is. When you love Jesus, you take delight in giving to advance his work on earth. And you are investing treasure in heaven. So today, beloved... If you want to have security and financial prosperity, stop robbing God. I say that kindly and start actually returning to him the tithes which belongs to him together with your offerings. Try it and watch God open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you. God will actually not, will not only bless your, family, your finances, he will also bless your family, your health, your life, and most of all, your spiritual work with him. Beloved, let me tell you. There are people who earn money, and the moment money comes in, it goes to the hospital bills. Whichever. It gets out. Beloved, it's a blessing. The Bible says, read with me, beloved, the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich, and he had no sorrow with it. Let me ask you, how much did Jesus give for you? 10%? No. He actually gave everything to save you. Everything. All he's asking from you, as far as your money is concerned, is faithful tithes and offerings. But what does God really want? He wants your heart. He says to you in Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 26, My son, give me thine heart. If Jesus has actually your heart, you will take delight in giving back to him. Would you like to say to Jesus today, Lord of heaven, help me to begin giving back to you. Lord, help me. That is your sincere prayer. Lord, help me to begin giving back to you faithfully. Is your sincere prayer. Amen. Thank you. May God be with you. God is faithful. Let me tell you, the hands that we lift up are the hands of commitment. And that is why you see normally, Politicians work along that. Beloved, people make sometimes promises that do not exist. Let me tell you, you are making a commitment to a God who gives you power. Because in Him, we can do nothing without Him. But we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Who does what? Gives us the strength. And beloved, because that is your commitment tonight. There is hope for you. All the tithes belongs to God. There is hope for you. Just do not your Lord default. There is hope for you. Heaven is blessings are all very broad. So there is hope in Christ for you. There is hope for you, beloved. Who with the tithes your offerings give. There is hope for you, beloved. A cheerful giver is the way to live. There is hope for you. Love for Christ is the highest motive. There is hope in Christ for you. Beloved, tonight, as we turn into, as we finish our study, I want us to sing this song together. I'd rather have Jesus as we stand. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. 
where is Brighton? Is normally the one who gives us the cue into this. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than whole. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or runs. I'd rather be led by Snape's hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dress way. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his because I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. Than to be the king of a vast domain, or be held in sin's dread swim. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. This world of ours today Is fairer than lyrics of rarest bloom Is sweeter than honey from all the calm is all that my hunger ring spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him breathe than to be the king of a vast domain. Or be held in sin's dread swim. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Beloved, as we pray tonight, I want you to know the secret to your prosperity. The reason as to why you are struggling financially. The reason as to why you can hardly even have credit money. The reason as to why you are living like a pauper. It is because of unfaithfulness. When I had this lecture the first time when in school, I applied it and I'm telling you the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. Give it a try. Let's pray. Our Father and our God who lives in heaven, we thank you and we praise you. We are so grateful and we want to thank you for the gift of life. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your providence. We want to thank you, Lord, for genuinely speaking to us on the prosperity and the security of our finances. We are living in uh, an economically threatened world currently where every commodity's price has been skyrocketed. We pray and we thank you because there is a formula in your word. That is not a problem to you. It is a problem 
if we are not faithful because in faithfulness you will give us power to overcome all these because your blessings are true to us help us and give us the power Lord to be faithful in returning tithes and offerings to you Lord wherever we have held against you whenever we have not been faithful to you in the mighty name of Jesus we are asking for our forgiveness wash us and cleanse us with thy blood and give us a power to begin afresh with you Lord help us to be careful and to watch towards this bless our finances bless our academics bless everything our health our families meet us at a point of need i want to thank you for your children who have been coming every night when you bless the rest of the world begin with us lord i pray that as we surrender as we live for our, our rest for night and then meet tomorrow for the sabbath may your blessings be bestowed upon each one of us help us in all things lord is our prayer in jesus name amen the of our subject for tomorrow will be three steps to heaven